Hello, this is Tracy Griffin, and I'm here with Automadia Griffin, and this is, and this, she's my daughter, and we're going to talk about yoga today in this episode. Um, so welcome, Autumn, to Griffin Wellness Solutions, and we're so happy to have you here to talk to us today about yoga. Thanks, Dad. It is a delight to be here with you. I'm excited to <laughs> okay. share my practice with you. All right. All right. Awesome. So, Autumn, first of all, I just want to introduce you to folks and kind of tell them a little bit about you. So tell us a little bit about your Ph.D. in teaching and learning and, and policy and leadership. Yeah. So I just graduated in May with my Ph.D. in teaching and learning policy and leadership <clears throat> with a specialization in language literacy and social inquiry from the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, and my research has a few streams. I am on a grant right now for the McDonald Foundation where I'm looking, it's a project called Digital Discourse through Penn GSE. And we're looking at how teachers are facilitating discourse for students online. The grant ironically was written prior to COVID, but we see how much more important that is right now. Um, I also do some research about black girls and I do research about digital literacies. So. Just a little bit of <laughs> everything and kind of finding my research groove right now. Sounds like your plate is full, Autumn. Sounds like you um, really stay fairly busy, a lot like your dad, I guess, huh? <laughs> yep, a lot like you. Well, I would say this then, Autumn. Um, tell us then, with your busy schedule, I'm interested to know how would you fit something like yoga into your schedule, but uh, First, I want you to tell us what made you interested in yoga. Yeah, so I started practicing my freshman year of college. I don't know if you remember my roommate, Sarah. Um, one day she was like, she was very interested in fitness. And for me, I didn't think about fitness in that kind of way, just because I like always played basketball or was on the track team. Or like, there was always something. So I didn't think of it as being a separate part of my life. But I guess when you go to college, you have to make time for it differently. And so she would wanna take these classes at the gym. And one day she was like, let's go to yoga class. And my response to her was no yoga's for skinny white girls. Like I'm not doing that. Um, she convinced me though. <laughs> and I went with her and I remember just how I felt at the end of the class. I was very conscious of my, my body because I was in class with a lot of skinny white girls and that's just not how my body is. Um, and so I was very self-conscious, but once I kind of like eased and like surrendered to the practice, I felt so relaxed and so at ease at the end of my practice and continued. And then at Penn State, we also had to take, for my particular major, we had to take some gym credits. So, I mean, of course I took basketball, but then I also used some of my credits to take yoga and to explore the practice a bit more and to understand what it was and fell in love and have been practicing since 2008. Wow, wow. So um, since 2008, you've been into that, right? Mm -hmm. You need to put that earpiece back in? Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> so I know that, you know, growing up, you stay pretty busy. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you play basketball, you try a little track. I think you did some volleyball here and there. Mm -hmm. So you stay, stay busy. So tell us a little bit about those things. And, um, you know, as you did them, um, how did that make yoga so much easier for you? I or think, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Or did it, or did it make it that much easier for you? I think that's actually it, is that it didn't, because I was used to like, for me, sports and fitness and staying in shape meant you needed to be competitive, right? Like you're competing against someone else. It's about being the best in the room and like mm -hmm. trying, you know, and your skills and like yoga is a skill, right? And there's skill to it, but it's also a very personal practice. One of um, my mentors, Kim, used to always say in like, not even in yoga, but just in um, my research, she would say, stay on your own mat. Um, and mm. she's also a yoga teacher. <laughs> and so I think that Thank was you. a large part of it. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a large part of it for me is that I had to learn to stay on my own mat, that I'm not worried about what someone else's like back bend or headstand or like warrior looks like. Like what does the pose feel like for me and my body? Um, and how am I allowing the pose to serve? How am I serving myself through the pose in that moment um, yeah. and remaining present as opposed to worrying about what else is going on in the room around me? 
Yeah, so a lot of people may take yoga to be something, uh, you know, spiritual or something of that nature. But when I look at yoga, I know I've you've seen me do yoga from time to time. Um, what does for me, it just makes my body limber. It kind of relaxes me, um, you know, and all of that. I just, I love doing it, you know, when, I, when I'm on that yoga trip. But right now I'm not. But um, when I'm doing it, I really enjoy doing it. Um, so uh, when you, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to hear a little bit about you being an instructor. Now, you know, I know you're instructing people. You're kind of blessing people with your talent uh, with the yoga. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Tell us what the, if there's a spiritual thing with yoga, what's your understanding of that? And so if- there's not necessarily, right? Like yoga is not tied to any, any religious practice or like faith belief. And I want to dis- dismantle that kind of like, mm-hmm. uh, ideology. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm completely honest, there are aspects and principles of yoga that are very similar to the aspects of Christianity, right? So when I think about the yamas and niyamas, they are principles of yoga that teach us how to not only engage with the world around us, but to teach us to engage with ourselves. So there are principles like um, do no harm, um, and that's to self and others, right? There are principles like honesty and integrity, right? And so a lot of these, these principles are very much not unlike what the Christian faith is. They're very much not unlike what Buddhists practice or what Muslims practice. And so I think a lot of times that's what people begin, that's why people associate it with some type of religion or spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. Um, Because a lot of the principles are just, they they are principles that exist in faith. And I think if if we're honest with ourselves, those are just good human values, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But as I begin to go deeper into my yoga practice, I'm practicing not only on the mat, but off the mat. So I'm looking at what does it mean for me to show up authentically? What does it mean for me to do no harm? Um, Sometimes that's in my words and how I speak to people, right? Sometimes that is in if I'm turning something in on time, right? Like there's also a principle that's like um, this this idea of not, not stealing, right? And that's not just stealing like physical things, but stealing people's time too. And so if I turn something in late past the deadline and don't communicate, then I've stolen someone's time when they could have been working on the thing that I sent them when I was supposed to send it to them. And so it it really is a practice that has you constantly look inward um, and reflect and think about who you are and how you're showing up in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And quite honestly, has helped me to go deeper into my faith walk with Christ. Awesome, awesome. So when you, are you teaching that same concept to your students? So a lot of the yoga I teach right now is on the mat. Um, Typically when people go to like yoga classes or yoga studios, they're not looking (laughs) for like the yamas and niyamas. They want a 60 minute class on the mat where they can like disengage their body and engage their mind. Um, So those aren't necessarily things that I teach directly. They are things that show up in the meditation practices or in um, affirmations that I say at the end, but not necessarily in the like, this is how I'm guiding you through this practice. Yeah, so um, I remember you took me to that yoga place in uh, Bethlehem. Was there Allentown or Bethlehem? Yeah. And that's where we, um, it was like a hot box inside there. Mm-hmm. What was that like a- what The was hot that? yoga class. A hot yoga class. We went in there and we sweated. We sweat so much, I couldn't believe it. But luckily it was a summer day, right? If I recall, mm-hmm. right? But um, I really enjoyed that and it felt so good to do that. Luckily, I was already in shape because some of the moves they put me in, you know, I was, I was already doing it, but I really enjoyed that. Um, and I'd love to go back there. Um, but tell us a little bit about that. What did, um, what was that all about? Tell people what that was about. The hot yoga class? Yes. So there are different styles of yoga. Um, and hot yoga is one. It's really good. So yoga has generally like three per- three things that people focus on. So it's flex or flexibility, balance and strength. Um, and hot yoga is really good for all of those, but especially for flexibility, when you think about the way the heat, what the heat does to our muscles and how it relaxes them and allows us to move and become a little bit more limber. Um, it's also just a great workout, right? And it eliminates a lot of the toxins in our bodies. I remember when I was living in Atlanta, I would wake up on Saturday mornings and go to yoga and Saturday is the weekend. So of course you get a lot of people who were out drinking the night before. Um, and sometimes the studio would just smell like 
sweat and alcohol because people are sweating out the toxins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but hot yoga is one style. One of the styles that I practice pretty frequently is vinyasa or kind of the more flowy yoga that people are used to, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's also yin yoga, which I have grown to love recently, but it's where you sit in a pose for like three to five minutes um, to really get the benefits of the pose, really stretch and really focus in on your breath. Um, there's I said yin, vinyasa, hot yoga. There are so many different types. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it really depends on like what your those purpose classes. So I mean, you're gonna teach me, right? That yeah. Is for free, just so you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what I'm, I just want to, you know, we started talking a little bit about s the um, spirituality, and I kind of took us off topic again, but I want to go back to that. Tell us about your education at the um, at Spiritual Essence Yoga in Maryland. What was the experience like? Yeah. So. Well, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. I found spiritual essence, um, maybe my second year of my doc program. Mm -hmm. I was, I was um, in school, it was stressful and I needed an outlet and I knew I always turned to yoga, but I was like, I'm done practicing yoga in studios with people that don't look like me and don't understand like that my body just isn't designed to do certain things. And so I sought out I'm very serious, right? Because yoga is a lot about the way you'll hear people say things like tuck your tailbone. Well, my tailbone doesn't tuck like yours because I have a lot of extra blessings, right? Um, and so I decided to intentionally seek out a black owned yoga studio. And so I was practicing there for maybe about two years. Um, they had this really great exchange program where because I was a doc student and couldn't necessarily afford classes, I would volunteer for two hours a week and just receive free yoga classes. Um, and it was intergenerational. So I'd be practicing with women like Nana's age and Grammy's age, but then also like teenagers. And it was just a really wonderful space. And one of the women who worked at the front desk who I'd become close with was in yoga teacher training and she started talking to me about it. And finally one day she was like, you should take training. <laughs> and I was like, I had never even considered that, you know, I could be a yoga teacher before then because I had never seen any black women yoga teachers. Um, and it was just so wonderful, such an affirming space. Dana, the studio owner and my instructor is just a beautiful human being. Um, she has a beautiful soul, beautiful spirit. And it was wonderful to learn culturally relevant practices for yoga, to learn what it means to be like a creative and practice yoga that like my classes don't have to look like the classes that I go to at the studio, mm. to learn that like I can structure classes as a healer for my students. So if my students come to me and they're like, you know, I have neck or back pains, or sometimes they come to me and like, they're like, I'm dealing with anxiety. My training has really prepared me not only for like the physical, but for the mental benefits of yoga and to structure a class around those. I love it. I love it, Autumn. I think, um, yeah, that's um, that's right along the lines of what I'm looking to hear from you, uh, especially Griffin Wellness Solutions. You know, we want people to come to our site and listen to what we have to say. Uh, and it all relates to wellness. So thank you for that. Thank you for touching on that. Um, so do you think that the students are really um, getting it when they when they sit through your sessions? You think that it's really benefiting them? I, from what they tell me and like from some of the um, feedback forms that I've gotten, because I was part of training, we had to get feedback forms. Mm -hmm. They seem to love it. They seem to have a lot of benefits. The one thing people are saying right now is that they wish they were in person, which unfortunately is just not possible <laughs> um, mm -hmm. given COVID, but they're, they seem to love it. So as far as I've heard, it's going really well. Mm -hmm. um, the one piece of feedback that I've gotten is that sometimes when I get excited, I can just kind of move. <laughs> and so I'm really practicing, especially in vinyasa classes um, and with new yogis. Right now, my intention is to practice slowing down my practice yeah, at those think, points. Yeah, yeah. I think you really have to pay attention in any instruction. I think you have to, and, and it's, it's funny that you were talking about this because yesterday I did a, a, a interview on um, holistic medicine. And one of the things we talked about is that the, the doctor really needs to understand the whole person, 
you know, not just the symptoms, not just the lab results, but just know what's going on in that person's life. And I would think that in yoga, when you go to instruct people on the topics that you just touched on, that it's important that you get to know, um, you get to know what their life is a little is about, you know, before you start instructing. So, and so be more into them instead of being into yourself as you instruct. Right. Absolutely. And I think that that is something that I am intentional about. I think the thing that becomes challenging is teaching online. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the studio, you can say, put your hand here, do this and kind of walk over and yeah. help people to get into the pose. Mm -hmm. And online, they're really relying on you to, to see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so what becomes challenging then is that I'm trying to do it, but also pay attention to how you're moving through the pose. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and sometimes like if my head is below my arms and I'm looking through my legs, like it's harder for me to see what's going on. Yeah. But I agree. Like, I think that instructing of any kind is hard, right? Like I'm a, I was a, a middle school teacher and now a professor, like it's challenging to instruct period. And it's, it's a, it's an art. Yeah. Um, and this is just a new art that I'm learning. So what's my favorite saying, Autumn? The problem with communication is the illusion that's been accomplished, right? You just got to make sure that you're getting through, and I'm sure you're doing that. So I wanted to understand, um, as far as your PhD and your yoga instructing, um, do you see any any connections between that degree and yoga, um, your yoga education? Absolutely. So my dissertation was on self-love and digital literacies, and my yoga instructor instructor actually came in to speak to and do some yoga with my girls when I was getting, when I was uh, collecting my data. Mm -hmm. And I think for black women in particular, mm -hmm. um, like I was mentioning earlier about the yoga space being very white, very female, very mm -hmm. thin. Um, and so what happens a lot of times is our bodies are demonized in these public spaces, right? Like we're taught to shrink ourselves or like that there's something wrong with the way our bodies are. Like I'm in perfectly good shape. I have always just had like really thick thighs and like, you know what I mean? Like our bodies are different. And that's something that when I'm going to white yoga studios, they don't always necessarily understand that or have that knowledge. And so my work is about black girls and black women and celebration of who we are and who God created us to be. And I think yoga has really helped me to do that, not only in my academic work, um, but on the mat. And I see spaces where the two are starting to overlap. Yeah, I, I've heard you mention that quite a few times about race. And I haven't really seen that because I've kind of looked online and I've seen different um, yoga instructors and all that. And I've seen all kinds, you know what I mean? Um, so that surprises me to hear you say that, but I can kind of relate, but what I would think more so it's body types. You know, I think everyone that has a particular body type, it would affect them. You know, you can't be the same. So if you're a thin person, uh, if you're a thin person instructing, then you can't expect the person that comes to your class will be kind of heavy to kind of get into some of the same positions that that other person would be. Although I've seen some heavier people that have been very flexible, like you just said, right? So, but then it could be vice versa. You can have a very limber yoga instructor that is teaching the class and some of the thinner people in the class can't um, really uh, get into those positions. So I think it's more, I think, but you're the, you're the expert. It's more of a body thing. You know what I mean? It's more of a body type thing, you know? So more than whether it's your, your you know, person of color or not. So, but that's just my thought. But, um, you know, this is great stuff or Miss PhD, uh, you know, she went for a PhD and she's, also now teaching yoga, you, you just got a lot on your plate, Autumn, but do you think that um, it reaches the multiple levels of health, including physical, mental, and spiritual uh, with yoga? And if you do, just kind of explore that with me a little bit. Talk to me a little bit about that. Absolutely. I think a lot of the physical benefits of yoga are pretty obvious, obvious right? Like um, we can work, we can use yoga to work through injury. We can use yoga to relax our muscles. We can use yoga to build strength or to build muscle mass, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think in terms of the, the mental health, I am in therapy and have been in therapy for maybe two and a half years now. 
And my therapist always comes back to practicing breathing exercises with me. Um, so if she senses that in a session, I'm really anxious or getting worked up over something, we stop and we practice breathing. Breathing is a regular part of yoga, right? Like I begin and end my classes with meditation. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so that is that is absolutely a part of yoga, and that has a lot to do with our mental health, the breathing, but also there are poses that require us to get out of our bodies and into our minds. So mm -hmm. if you think of something like tree pose or like warrior three, where you're balancing on one leg, you can't be thinking about what you're going to make for dinner and what's worrying you and who said what, because you're going to fall. You have to focus on one point and be very like intentional about what your body is doing. Yeah. And in terms of the emotional, um, there are, and this is scientific, this is not spiritual, just as a heads up, but there are these different energy centers that live in our bodies that are referred to as chakras in yoga. And a lot of the chakras are, the chakras are very much associated with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So Maslow says that like at the base, right, that we need like food, help, we need food, we need shelter, we need like to feel loved, right? Mm -hmm. Our root chakra, which is situated um, at our sacrum, is the same, it's very much the same thing, right? Like that chakra is associated with like belonging and wellness and so on and so forth. And like, so when someone's chakra is over energetic, that might, you might see where they are a bit larger in that area, if it's under energetic, vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. um, what is important about yoga is that when you move in different poses, you hit different chakras and different poses can help you to balance different chakras, right? And so the, the like spiritual wellness comes in there because if you're, if you're well mentally and emotionally, right? Or if you're well mentally and physically, then like you start to become well emotionally and these poses help you to move through some of the emotions. Or like, for instance, our hips are where we store a lot of tension like in our bodies, but also in our emotions. So there are times when like I will get in a pose or when some of my students get into a pose and they just cry because this, this pose, the, as you're releasing into the pose, you're releasing all of this tension. Um, and so there's, there's yeah there, yeah, there are all of these different benefits to yoga that are not just physical, but mental and emotional as well and spiritual, truthfully. You know, <clears throat> I started getting into yoga when I, you know, was doing my P90X, you know, mm -hmm. love the exercise, love going through the drill, you know, you, but you're doing uh, with P90X, you, you are really engaging in a lot of uh, cardio type exercise, some strength building, and also you're doing the yoga. Um, uh, do you see, uh, do you see uh, how you can compare the benefits of doing both. I, I saw some great benefits when I'm doing, when I'm on my P90X kick. Um, but what, what do you see with regard to exercise and yoga? I think yoga specifically learning about the human anatomy and how the muscles in our bodies function together and the muscle groups in our body function together mm -hmm. um, has really helped me to has helped me to improve my performance athletically. So for instance, one of the things that I learned that I would have never thought of, right, is that very often in yoga, if we're in like down dog or um, chaturanga and your wrists are hurting, what that often is a symptom of is a weak core, right? Because mm -hmm. your, your core <laughs> is what you're holding up with your wrists a lot of times. And so in order to strengthen your wrist, you have to strengthen your core. More there to help. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so I am now learning that. And then that encourages me then in just regular workouts or my hip workouts or whatever they are to strengthen my core so that I can be better for yoga. But then yoga also helps me to think about energetically how my body is. So if I'm in warrior three, my knees have to be a certain way. The line of energy has to be, it's supposed to be down the middle of my body, right? Like, so I, it helps me then to think about form when I'm working out, whether I'm lifting a kettlebell or swinging a, a kettlebell or lifting a dumbbell, it's helping me to think very intentionally about how I'm placing my body and honoring my body because this is the only one I have. Um, so I've moved away from like, I need to do this just so I can be better than everyone else or as good as everyone else to like, no, I'm doing this because this is my body. This is the only one I have. This is my temple. I need to treat it well. So does yoga teach you about honoring your temple? Yes. Um, 
I would have to get back to you with the specific name of the yama or niyama that does that, but it, it does, right? Um, I can actually show them to you as soon as we get off this call. Yeah. Like you can have a link. Doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would yeah. love to. I would love to do that at some point, but not today. We um, just so you know, um, Autumn and I are in separate rooms doing this Zoom because I didn't know yeah. she was coming home this week. But um, we're la we love to have you here. We're glad to have you here, um, Autumn. Um, so uh, let me see. What would I think of asking you? Because I want to understand how Autumn because I think you wanna draw people into you because I think this is a benefit. This is a, a practice that you have, right? And you're teaching people. I see you get up at six in the morning having a yoga class. Um, what do you wanna to say to people to draw them in to them the benefits? Not necessarily to you, but you'd love to have to, to, to instruct people, but what are the benefits and why would you wanna draw them in? I think, I mean, I can't go, I can't say enough about the benefits, right? I think if I start very basically with, you know, the physical practice of yoga, mm -hmm. it has, you know, I've had, I injured my knee my freshman year of high school and like always had issues with that, right? I think yoga is wonderful because it not only helps me to strengthen my knee, but also is gentle on my knee. Um, I think when I think about, even what I'm putting in my body, yoga, yoga has played a lot into that. Um, so there are times when I don't eat meat and there are times when I do, but I'm also learning to think much more strategically about how my body responds to what I put in it. So so sometimes I don't eat meat because like I don't feel it. I see it starting to break out my face or what have you, or I feel sluggish. Sometimes my body needs more of something and I can sense that, so I eat it, but I'm learning to be more in tune with what it is because I'm becoming more accustomed to the stillness, right? Mm -hmm. the, the moments in yoga where I have to be still and listen to what my body is telling me and move in ways that it needs to move in that moment. That's good. Um, there are tons of mental benefits. I think I have become much more reflective. Mm -hmm. I have become much more slow to anger <laughs> since practicing yoga and much more attuned to um, just digging into whatever practices I need in the moment, whether that's breathing or, you know, I yeah. can't say enough about the benefits. Yeah, I just want to say this. It just came to mind that, you know, it's, it's important that people don't, can, don't mix the three that I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking prayer, meditation, and yoga, three separate things, but they all give you sort of that same benefit in my mind, you know, you, because, you know, in prayer, you're spending time with God, right? Mm -hmm. Having a conversation with God, your quiet time away, spending that time. When you're meditating, you're kind of just kind of in the same way, could be spending that time with God, but, but you're just kind of not taking the, the outside world away and just kind of concentrating on the inside, the internal. Mm -hmm. In yoga, it's all of that, but you're having physical movements. You're moving your body, but you want to keep your mind clear, you know, and you're just focusing on what you're doing. So talk to Kind that. of, kind of. So I think often people hear the word yoga and think just about the physical practice. Mm -hmm. Yoga is lived, it's a lived thing. It's a lived practice and it doesn't just happen on the mat. What we do on the mat are called asanas or poses. Um, and you flow through a series of asanas or poses during mm -hmm. the practice mm -hmm. um but yoga is a lived practice in your life right so i am a yogi i i when i leave my mat i'm still a yogi right that influences all of the decisions i make how i communicate with people how i um how i understand mm -hmm. the world how it influences all of that right um meditation is a part of yoga right and there can be times when you're in yoga and you're praying, right? Um, the idea is to focus in your mind. And so I think they're, they're, they are, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. And I wanna like challenge you and listeners to think about how also there are connections between the three. So I wanna know, this is, one of, this is my last question I'm gonna ask you before we close things up, but why do you believe that yoga is important to your health? I think yoga is important to health because it is holistic. It doesn't focus just on the physical, but on the mental and the emotional. And I think when you become studied in yoga, it can actually help you to 
go deeper into your faith practice um, as it has for me. Mm, that's very good, very good. So Autumn, this is a very good conversation. I'd love to extend it a little bit, but I think that I'd like to have you come back someday and talk to me a little bit about this on mat and off mat thing. Let's like zoom in on that a bit. You think that we can have a conversation for about 15, 20 minutes about on the mat and then switch on off the mat? I think we could. Awesome, awesome. So uh, Autumn, I just want to say thank you very much for um, spending your, your, your day with us, taking some time out of your busy schedule to spend some time with us to talk to us today on this episode with Griffin Wellness Solutions on yoga. So I appreciate it, yo, uh, uh, Autumn, and I want you to have a wonderful evening. This is Tracy Griffin at Griffin Wellness Solutions talking to you today in this episode on yoga. Please come back. Please visit our website at griffinwellnesssolutions.com. God bless you and have a good night.